All right, welcome back. And let us just dive straight into the next section on inner versus outer confidence, right? And this is a concept I picked up many, many years ago and my thinking has changed slightly on it, but I think it proved very valuable to understand this. So inner confidence is the confidence that can be attributed to internal factors, right? These are things that are happening on the inside, on your subjective level, your subjective experience. Whereas outer confidence is everything that relates to the external world, on the external level, perhaps even in the objective reality. Both of these are important. I don't think you should discount either of them, right? So sometimes people might say, well, yeah, it doesn't really matter what kind of person you are. As long as you can dress well, as long as you can look good, you know, you gotta just act it, fake it till you make it. Other people might say, no, 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 no. It's all about how you feel, how you act, right? If you're wearing a fancy suit, if you're wearing a big watch, doesn't matter. I would say that both of these things play a role. But if you have to prioritize, I would always recommend prioritizing inner confidence first. And I will go into why that's the case a little later, but that would be my personal recommendation for if you wanna work on this. Let's start with outer confidence. First of all, we have looks and image. Looks and image basically means what do you look like, right? What clothes are you wearing? How do other per people perceive you? Am I perceived as a funny person maybe, or an intelligent person? Do I look well-dressed? Do I look clean? Do I look fit, right? This is all related to looks and image. And the reason why looks and image are so important is, let's, let's put it this way. We've all heard of survival of the fittest, right? Which basically means the fittest creature survives. The fittest creature can um, succeed evolutionarily. Now, I'm a big fan of always looking at th things through an evolutionary lens, right? Because much of the behavior that we have, many of the things that we do relate back to our wish, our need to keep on living, to keep on reproducing, right? So evolutionarily speaking, if the fittest survive, then we want to be fit, right? Because by me being fit, I signal to potential mates, but also to the rest of our community that I am a suitable partner, right? I can be a suitable dad or a suitable whatever. I can be suitable for survival. And fitness, and I think this is an important thing to understand, doesn't necessarily mean physical fitness, right? Fitness is a very abstract term. Not abstract term, it's a broad term. Fitness is a very broad term. Basically, it means how well is an organism able to adapt to its environment, right? So the environment calls for certain behavior, and if an organism is very able to adapt to that call of society, that's what's fitness. Right? So we confuse kind of uh, fitness in, in our nowadays culture with just looking good, just looking aesthetically pleasing. But it's more than that. It's about how well I can thrive, how well I can survive, but also how well I can thrive in an environment. And by me dressing in a certain way, carrying myself in a certain way, having a certain look and a certain image, I am signaling to other people hopefully to a potential mate, because that's why we do many of the things we do, but I am signaling to other people that I am fit, that I am ready to survive, and that if you join me, that's your strategy for survival as well. Then the next thing that really shows a outer confidence is status symbols. And these are things that you can carry, things that you can have that signal your status in the hierarchy. So human beings make hierarchies. We are very hierarchical creatures. We're social creatures and very hierarchical creatures. And Jordan Peterson always tells this great story, which I love retelling, about the likeliness or the likeness between human being and lobsters, right? So human beings and lobsters, they diverged evolutionarily over 300 million years ago. Um, but the interesting thing that you see is that the neurocircuitry circuitry in the brain that regulates how we feel about ourselves, that regulates our mood, our appetite, the serotonin system, it is the same system that we humans have as that the lobsters have. 
And one of the things that regulate this system is our social status, is our place in this hierarchy. The higher we are in this hierarchy, the more serotonin we produce. And the more serotonin we produce, the better we feel, the better we function. And the funny thing that you see in these lobsters, because they are also having this social hierarchy, they confront each other in a fight, right? Two lobsters start fighting. If a lobster loses a fight and gets degraded in this hierarchical structure, in this hierarchy, they also produce less serotonin, right? So they produce less serotonin, and as they do that, they start kind of hunching, making themselves small, going a little bit like this. So in order for you to feel confident, you want to puff up, you want to make yourself big, you want to increase that serotonin production, and you want to increase your status, your place in this hierarchy. And a great way to do that is signaling your place in the hierarchy. Now, something to be mindful of is how this is being signaled, right? I was listening to this interview the other day, which was very interesting. They talked about luxury beliefs, which were basically beliefs that a certain privileged group of people could hold because they were that privileged. But the funny thing about these beliefs were that often they would say, for example, um, everyone should have access to the market or everyone should uh, treat each other fairly. Or they had, they had these very beautiful, nice, empathetic beliefs, but it was easy for them to believe them from a very privileged perspective. Now we've kind of moved into that more culturally also with other things, right? I'm at a university here, I'm in a university. Most people in university don't dress up with big status symbols. Nowadays, it's actually the other way around. If you are high in the social hierarchy, you might dress sloppy. You might dress in a way where you're basically saying, I can afford to dress like this because I'm already in this privileged position. Whereas someone who's maybe wearing a Gucci bag and a Rolex watch, they might seem classically to have had very strong status symbols, but in nowadays culture, actually that's seen as tacky or that's seen as try hard. So it's a very nuanced thing, which symbols actually display your status, which symbols actually signal your place in the hierarchy, uh, and which ones actually might be a little old school, tacky, not really working that well. Um, great example, last example, and then we move on to the next one, is social media pages, right? Maybe historically speaking, you would flex your status by wearing a suit, whereas now you flex your status by being on holiday in Bali or having a very comfortable and rich lifestyle and having all these beautiful girls around you, right? It's the same evolutionary game we're playing. It's the same thing we're trying to prove, but it's a different way of doing it. Cool. Then we have position and network. And this is another way for you to signal your place in the hierarchy. So, for example, if I told you right now that just before recording this, I had a phone call with Elon Musk, and you would actually believe me, right? Because it would be very easy for you not to believe me, and you should not believe me when I say that. But let's say for a moment that you would believe me. My social status would instantly go times a million, right? I would be instantly at the top. So just by associating with certain people, just by having certain people around me, I can already show that I have a certain place, a certain status in this hierarchy. So your position, your role in society, your job, the people that you know can all play a very important role in how you are perceived, in which part of this hierarchy you are residing. The challenge that I want to give you right now is to write down a outer confidence trait, one of these three that you find most important. What is really important for you? Is it the looks and image? Is it the status symbols? Or is it the network and the position? If you had to choose one, which we don't have to choose one, which one of these will be most important to you? And just keep in mind, it's okay, everyone one's outer confidence traits. So just own it, you don't have to be embarrassed about it. Just write down what is most important to you.